everyone and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's 48th World where we do the bold and the beautiful soap opera reviews. Today we're going to be going over the one that aired on today the 21st. I tell you writers if you can't go big go home because you basically got my interest peaked to the highest of thinking I was going to see something go off between Ridge, Rusty Dusty, Logan's Run, and you, Courageous Ivan. But the writers didn't write it that way. They gave me this fake fraudulent shit today. <laughs> Have Ivy's character go big or go home. It's time to shake it up, rattle it up, and get it done before we go to Australia and see. Oh, Bozo the Clown and bought and paid for I get married. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't understand. I don't. Or maybe it's going to come where the writers put it in where Rusty Dusty can't get married. Or want to get married over there in Australia. Well, bought and paid for and Bozo the Clown. But Rusty Dusty don't want to get married because he don't fell in love with slept from another mother. I don't know what's going on. But I really was excited that they were going to be exposed today and it didn't happen. So let's just go on and get on into the scene we were capping from yesterday's episode. Logos Ron is asking, Courageous Ivy, what do you want to tell me? What do you have to tell me? So all I'm going to office thinking we're going to hear some hollering, some slapping, some hollering, throwing stuff, glass breaking, all of it. But it doesn't happen, y'all. She pretty much gets them all into uh, to the office and she makes her idle threats. Only Rusty Dusty knows where she's going with it. So she goes on and play the role like she got something to say. She finna bust Rusty Dusty all up in his head with knowledge of what she knows about what him and Slut from another mother been doing behind everybody's back. And, you know, I'm thinking she's gonna blow the torch. And it's just gonna go all the whole room gonna go up all in fire. You know what I'm saying? It didn't happen, y'all didn't happen. Ooh, she goes on to pretty much tell Logan's Ron that she would love for them, meaning Rusty Dust and her, to get married in Australia. And if they really wanted to, she know a, lot, a great location, this, that, and third. Um, they can hook it up together and all this. And, of course, Rusty Dust is, like, relieved that she didn't do what he felt she was going to do. Or hell, the viewers felt she was going to do. So she pretty much dismisses herself thing and everything is you know kosher and that's truly was ivy's intent was to just tell her that so when she exits that's where <sighs> excuse me rusty dusty and her really have a heart-to-heart -heart talk and but instead of her tanning into his ass she just goes on and say are you just playing with uh slept from another mother or do you really like her because it's not fair what y'all are doing to uncle eric I was like, oh my goodness. I can't. I can't with this storyline. I can't. So we move on from there. We go to uh, Bottom Pay For. She's still trying to talk to um, Father Leader Thomas about his role in the company. And it's not as dim as he think it is. And he wants, she wants him to come around to the old way he used to think. And of course, Father Leader Thomas didn't like what... Uh, bought and paid for was talking about when she was critiquing his work or his designs and stuff so they get in a little tip go from there we go Sally talks to you know the group about the numbers and the uh, social media presence that they're making and who's coming to the fashion show and lord they talked to Darlita about who's coming this that, and the third that one confusing woman I mean Darla wasn't that stupid she was not that stupid Okay, she was not a dumb blonde, but this girl is a brunette, and she's acting all the whole saying of a dumb blonde's mentality. Okay? Whew. Anyway, Dalita goes on to say, ain't nobody coming, hun? Ain't nobody coming. Nobody. Even Saul even said he he had to put himself as a list of maybe. So he told me he got to go shine his shoes. They kind of look scuffed up. I said, oh, no. Oh, no. Pink slip for him. But technically, I think everybody's getting paid at the back of when revenue comes in. So, no, I, she can't afford to fire him because he's working for free pretty much. Anyway, we move on from that situation. We have Dollar Bill wants Jared, the fashion reporter, to go to interview 
Sally Spectra's fashion show that she has coming up. And of course, Jerry said, I have my reputation. I can't be just uh, interviewing in and everybody about the fashion. And from the looks of it, she's a complete joke. I ain't put my reputation online and no other half worthy uh, journalist is going to either, they're not going to, they're going to do the same. They're going to stay far away from that. You're like, no, I need you to go. You work for me. <laughs> I'm like, uh oh. Dollar Bill pulling rank and he's telling everybody they are doers for him. They don't have an opinion. He don't hire them from opinions. Uh, state. He has them to do what he wants them to do. So he had to pull a rank on uh, Paul Jared. And Jared looked like a deer caught in headlights. He don't know what to do. He know what he got to do to keep his job and his reputable, reputable, reputable credibility in the fashion world. Okay. Gumby might be a little tarnished, but Dollar Dollar Bill said he's going, he's going to do the job and that's pretty much it. He don't want nothing else about it. Okay, then we go to Crackpot Pam. Crackpot Pam runs into the office with Steffi and Thomas to show them the uh, latest viral sensation social media that, of course, none other than Sally has put out in the public on her social media of bought and paid for smashing none other than Sally Spectra's face in a cake. And they kind of make it like a little joke type uh, Snapchat thing when you go in. It's kind of, not, it wasn't really animated, but it was very much so comical. And it was just kept showing Steph pushing her head, pushing her head in cake, pushing her head in cake. You know, like one of them trap doors just keep opening the shit. And you know what I'm saying around Halloween time, just to scare people. And it was really hilarious and everybody was, um, you know, taking their little, views on it and this that and the third and uh thomas thought it was quite funny crack pop pam thought it was quite funny but bottom pay for like shut it off like she's somebody's parent i'm like are you are you kidding me your brother is older than you outrank you in the design field just because you're holding that empty title doesn't mean a damn a damn thing to him, pretty much. And he like he ain't gonna do nothing. He gonna look at this. He gonna laugh, 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 cause he would dare. He didn't see that particular part, but he was all up on Sally Spectre, and he has definitely come to like her in a, a sexual way. I don't know if it could be uh, based on anything, but he kind of reminds me of Macy and Thorne back in the day. But it is what it is. We're moving on. We go to Dollar Dollar Bill. He's making Jerry go to Sally Spectre show. His angle is to get that building for other purposes. That's what he's trying to tell Gerald without actually telling him the full-blown story. We go to commercial, we come back, we have bought and paid for his texting, and Crackpot Pam and Thomas are still laughing at the publicity stunt Sally um, put out on herself and um, bought and paid for on social media. Then, um, their little, Dalada is, um, I don't know what's wrong with her. She's just crazy. Dollar 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 don't act like no receptionist, no secretary, no nothing. She's just, I don't know, she's more of a dreamer. But she seems like she got some wits about her, but she is she's definitely dumber than what they tried to portray Dollar to be. A dollar wasn't that spaced out. Not at all. Then we go where um Dollar gets a phone call because she is the receptionist. She don't hear it ringing. Everybody pretty much hear it ring itself for her. Then um, Sally tell her to go get her phone. She answers the phone. Uh, she, uh, it's about, <clears throat> what do you call it? Sally don't mess her stuff up with a long shark. And the long shark wanted to talk to her. And Sally tells Darletta Dar to tell him, Darletta to tell uh, that person that she's not there. Darletta goes and says exactly the same thing. Like, <laughs> Word for word. She says she's not here. And everybody looking at you like, damn. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, she go on and pick up the phone. She tells, uh, well, she tries to get the bill collector, her loan shark, off her tail by saying she's getting ready for a show. He's going to get his money. This, that, and the third. And she gets them off. Then we do that situation. She's telling her, uh, her staff, minus Grams, that they need press and they need it right now. Then we go to Dollar Dollar Bill. He's telling and showing Jared a prototype building he wants to put where Seller Spectra's warehouse is. He wants to build another location for Spencer's publications, but a bigger one. 
and he can't because that building is being occupied by Nimrods, <laughs> basically is what he's saying. And they're in the building where he wants to construct it. So he's telling Gerald his full-blown plan and how he fits into it. We leave that situation. We go to Ivy. Ivy doesn't tell Brooke. Okay, courageous Ivy doesn't tell Logan's Ron. She started to, but she changed her mind. So, of course, Logan Ron's leave. Then Courageous Ivy and Rusty Dusty really start to talk about what is he doing with slut from another mother? Why is he doing it? And is it a game? Okay, I'm like, Courageous Ivy, whether it was a game or not, or they were doing it for real, you were supposed to expose him. Well, at least that's what I wanted you to do. That's what I had my teeth and my determination and my all eyes on you today for today's episode that you're going to do it. But I know the writers let me down. They didn't play the part. They're trying to dramatize something up till it just gets to its final peak and then it explodes. But I really wanted it today, writers. I'm just letting you know that. Okay, we go to commercial. We come back. We have Courageous Iris tells Rusty Duster she saw him. She saw him kissing on Slut from Another Mother. And she wants to know what's really up. Leave that situation. We go to bottom pay for She's trying to give um, Father Leader Thomas some constructive criticism about his arch designs. And Father Leader Thomas don't believe so. Uh, he really uh, feels like he's a hired hand. That, you know, once uh, Rusty Dusty and Logos Ron go and get married, he's going to have to be on the back burner, you know, drawing designs, making up for his dad's designs that he didn't put in. And he just don't feel like working hard for nothing. So then we leave that situation. Go to Dollar Bill is scheming or he's really trying to show Jared his prototype and what he really feels about it. Then he's asking Jared to show him his invitation that he received from Sally Spectre. And he goes on to read it from Jared's cell phone. And he's like, uh huh, yeah, whatever. He's okay. And Jared said, you know, you see why I don't want to go? And then Dollar Bill just start picking in numbers or he's typing uh, a response back to um Sally Spectre about her invitation and he goes on and reserves a spot for none other than Gerald <laughs> Maxwell okay on his behalf so he might didn't want to go but guess what he going y'all he going then we have Darletta Darletta tells Sally that Gerald Maxwell um because her phone was ringing and she goes on to answer her text whatever and she says uh Maxwell uh, is coming. The fashion designer, you know, Gerald from Special Publications, he will be attending back um, to write, you know, I guess, you know, come out and see your works and this, that, and that. So all of them are very uh, excited about it. But basically, no, Dollar Bill is sending Gerald to basically write a bad review of all her collections that she's showing at the fashion show so they can pretty much sabotage her so she can be done with so Bill can have his building. Okay? Then we go to Rusty Dusty. Rusty Dust is telling Courageous Ivy she is blowing smoke. Okay? She's blowing the whole thing out of proportion and she really needs to stop it. Courageous Ivy goes on to say, no. Uh, uh, I actually know about the shower scene. I also know about the steam room. I was waiting for her to say, and I know about her being naked, but she didn't say that, so she don't know that piece of tea. And she would have had Ridge at three strikes, you're out. But it just is what it is. And, you know, he's just saying, you know, that's not it. With no propositioning being made, we don't like each other. We still at that stance, so forget about it. Here, Russ Dutch is trying to deceive Courageous Ivy. He says, it's nothing. Ivy decides to tell Russ Dutch that she will be watching both of them. And she won't say nothing for now. But one more slip up, she's going straight to her uncle. All right, writers, please get it together. Let's expose them so we can move on to another storyline, okay? And that storyline will probably be uh, Logan's Run running to uh dollar dollar bill okay and then they're having their ever after romance all right then we'll do that situation we go to about and pay for her. she brings her ceo position up at the bargaining table while she's fussing and pulling rank on father leader thomas and his designs thomas said f you honey no he didn't really but he pretty much gave her that um we call it indication that he didn't care nothing what she was talking about and he's like, he's not working on any more designs. She either like them or she don't. He don't really give a crap. So he basically walks out on her and she's looking stupid. 
Of course. I'm like, why would you already pull rank again about who you are, what position you hold when it's already a volatile uh, conversation you're in? Bad, bad choice. Okay? Bad choice for half of the CEO. All right. Then we move on to Gerald. He says uh, to Dollar Bill, why are you using me as one of your hired guns for a real estate venture? Can't you find another place to basically <laughs> build your new empire on? And Bill's like, I know you ain't talking to me like that. I know you're not trying to give me options. No, this is a dictatorship. This is not something you try to have an opinion in, sir. Okay, Mr. Maxwell, you work for me. Therefore, you do what I say do. You're going to the fashion show. You will write a horrible review of the fashion show. And then we will just watch together how things just trickle down. And then I can have what I want, which is that property to build my new empire on. Okay, so don't have an opinion. Just do your do work as I present it out to you. <laughs> Hell. I'm like, okay, so Bill had to come in and regulate. That was good. But the writer didn't give me what I was looking for today. Such a shame, such a shame. But we'll be paying attention tomorrow, and I will be giving it to you as I view it. All right, guys, that was the Bold and the Beautiful for Tuesday, February 21st. We'll talk to you soon. Blessings.